Hey everyone, I recently came across a very comprehensive report on Indian textile sector by Sher Khan. In that report, it has discussed that after a long slowdown, Indian textile sector is on the verge of next set of rally. And within textile sector, companies with better product profile, then strong export clientele, and integrated business model and capacity expansion are expected to post strong double digit earning growth of 20 to 40% CGR rate over next FY23 to 25. And some of these textile companies are currently available at very attractive valuation. So in this video, we will first discuss the challenges faced by textile sector in the past and key growth drivers for the future. And then Sher Khan report has also discussed their preferred stock to buy. One of the preferred stock from this list, I have discussed it in detail recently. But before we proceed, just a disclaimer, I am not a SEBI registered advisor. The idea behind this video is to just share my knowledge. Kindly do your own analysis before investing your money. Alright, let's get started. So last year in FR23, textile sector was badly impacted due to multiple headwinds. First of all, there was low demand for textile in April due to fall in demand from end consumer. As we witnessed huge inflation problem across the world, it resulted in consumers curtailing their spending on fashion and discretionary products to ensure that they have enough money for essentials like your grocery, energy bill, fuels, etc. So fall in demand for fashion products resulted in sharp decline in order book for textile sector in FR23. Obviously when the order book falls, revenue also declined. Then second headwind was due to fall in demand, the inventory with textile companies got piled up. And when you have inventory piled up, you have to clear it at low cost. So that resulted in inventory loss and impacted the EBITDA of textile companies. Then third reason was huge surge in cotton prices. Look at this chart for cotton price. During March 20, cotton prices were at levels of $0.5 per pound. But over the next two years, cotton price zoomed to nearly $1.5 per pound. That's three times jump in cotton price. Just imagine you buying raw material for 100 crore and the price jumped to 300 crore. Obviously this 3x growth in raw material was huge and that was another big reason for sharp decline in EBITDA margin of textile companies. Not only this, textile sector also witnessed increase in input cost due to crazy rise in electricity and gas prices that further shrunk its margin. So basically textile sector got badly impacted due to fall in revenue and margin contraction that resulted in sharp decline in net profits. But now in FR24, situation is turning around. First of all, there is inflation is falling. So it means the demand for fashion and discretionary spending is expected to increase as people will have more money to spend. Here, please note that we are specifically talking about US and Europe market. So US market is showing gradual signs of recovery while Europe is still struggling and would take some more time for recovery. So basically global retailers and brands in the US and Europe are replenishing their leftover inventory and this would result in improvement in order book for Indian textile players. So that's reason number one. And please understand that there's a lead time of three to six months from order placement to manufacturing to shipment. It means the order that textile companies would get today are for next three to six months. So down the line in next three to six months, situation would improve even further and there would be good demand from end consumer. So eventually, higher order book would eventually result in higher revenue. Then second reason is textile companies have already cleared up their inventories that impacted their EBITDA earlier. And third reason is sharp correction in cotton prices. From the peak of $1.5 per pound, cotton prices have corrected nearly 50% to levels of 0.8. So fall in raw material prices would directly result in margin expansion. Moreover, now the energy cost has also fallen and freight cost has also reduced. So on one side, there is a good recovery in order book expected in coming quarters. On other side, fall in raw material and energy prices would result in improved margin. On top of this, most of textile companies have invested in capacity expansion that would further result in more revenues and profits. On top of that, there is one major trend that would fuel the growth of textile companies that export textile product to US and Europe. It's China plus one. In the last decade, China saw a significant drop in its export market share with brands diversifying away from China due to higher labor cost and increasing trade barrier. This has benefited other Asian countries like your India, then Vietnam, Bangladesh and Pakistan. And this is one trend that is expected to continue in the years to come. 
As you can see on the screen, in calendar year 2017, China had 35% share in world apparel export. This got reduced to 33%, then 32% during COVID, and latest it is 33%. This decline is sharper in US, where China's share in US apparel imports have come down from 33% in 2018 to 22% in calendar year 22. So Indian textile companies specifically focusing on US market has more advantage due to trade war between US and China. Now we can look at the future growth prospects in two ways. First is near term and second is long term. In the near term, as discussed, recovery in demand and fall in input cost, including your cotton prices, electricity, etc., would result in improvement in both top line and bottom line. Moreover, the capacity expansion would again boost the growth. And in the long term, there is a major structural shift of MNCs reducing their dependency from China and moving to other countries. Moreover, even Indian government wants to revive the Indian textile sector and has announced PLI scheme for man-made fiber and technical textile and also announced the launch of mega textile parks. In fact, Indian government has set an ambitious target of taking textile and apparel export from $44 billion to $100 billion by FY28. Today, Indian textile sector is looking very promising due to government support with right policies, abundance of raw material and huge availability of labor. But within the sector, companies with better product profile, strong export clientele and integrated business model and capacity expansion are expected to benefit the most. What are those companies? Let's have a look. So first name in Sher Khan list is Gokul Das Export. Gokul Das is one of India's largest integrated apparel manufacturer with capacity of 36 million pieces per annum. This stock has once tanked 90% but there was management change in 2018 with Shima Ramakrishnan and Ganpati as MD and it turned around the company. It was clearly visible in financials with revenue growing at 17% CGR between FY19 to 23 and profit growth at staggering 54% CGR in the same period. Company has also seen a sharp improvement in its margin that have expanded by 660 basis point in last three years. And there is further scope for margin expansion. Company has also expanded its capacity with total capex plan of 370 crore. In FI22, they invested 84 crore. In FI23, investment was 160 crore. And in FI24, it is 120 crore. This investment would generate additional revenue of around 1100 to 1300 crore. Company is also planning to enter into a joint venture to make an investment in Bangladesh to explore export opportunities there. Now, if you are following my channel, I recently covered Google Das Export in my next multi-bagger series a couple of weeks ago when it was at levels of around 400 to 410. From there, the stock has already jumped around 15 to 20% to current levels of 480. Even after this jump, Google Das current P is still very reasonable at levels of around 17 and a market cap of just under 3000 crore rupee. So, Sher Khan has initiated buy call on Google Das Export with target of 635. In fact, they have three cases. In bear case, the target is 477. In actual case, target is 635. And in bull case, target is 807. In case you want to learn about Google Das business model, I would strongly recommend watching my video. I have provided the link in the description. And if you are looking for well-researched quality content in finance and investment domain, then make sure that you click on the subscribe button and press the bell icon to get the regular updates on my new videos. Now on the risk side, one of the key risks mentioned is large dependence on limited customer. So company depends on limited number of customers for a significant portion of export revenue. The loss of one or more customer may result in a reduction in production and sales and may adversely affect company's business. Apart from this, another risk include your increase in cotton price and slowdown in their key export market which is basically US and Europe. In fact, even the institutional investors are bullish on this company. FIs have stakes have gone up from 0.77% in FI18 to currently at 17.2%. DI's stake is up from 1.05% to 31.35%. Look at the crazy buying from both FIs and DI's. Although it's showing promoter stake falling, but I've already mentioned my in my video that Gokul Das promoter is a PE firm that is booking profit as it had entered at very low levels. Now look at the sharp fall in public holding. Shareholding moving from weak hands of public to strong hands of DIs and FI clearly suggests very bright growth prospects. Then second stock in Sher Khan list is KPR Mill. Company has initiated a buy call on this company. 
So KPR Mill is one of the largest vertically integrated textile manufacturing company in India, present across the entire value chain from fiber to fashion. KPR Mill has 12 technology oriented manufacturing unit with a capacity to produce 1.04 lakh metric ton of yarn per annum, then 40,000 metric ton of fabric per annum, then your 157 million ready-made knitted apparels per annum and 25,000 metric ton of fabric processing capacity. KPR Mill has recently forayed into the retail segment with brand Faso and which is a 100% organic innerwear sportswear and its leisure brand. Company also has sugar manufacturing business with sugar production capacity of 20,000 per ton per day and then ethanol capacity of 360 kiloliter per day and power generation capacity of 90 megawatt. In FI22, 60% of the total revenue has come from domestic market whereas exports have contributed to around 38% of revenue. Company has exports to over 60 plus countries including Europe, Australia and the US. Now KPR Mill has an excellent financial track record with strong balance sheet. Its strength lies in its integrated business model that helps it to achieve consistent EBITDA margin improvement which is even better than other export focused PR. Company has recently announced CAPEX of around 500 crore out of which 250 crore is for modernization of plant. This would incrementally add another 250 crore to revenues and would also help boost its profitability in the coming year. Company's government order book for the next 6 months stands at 1000 crore and management has guided for double digit revenue growth. Then company's EBITDA margins will improve in FI24 and FI25 on back of reduction in cotton prices and improved mix. Revenue and PAT are expected to grow at CAGR of 17% and 27% over your FI23 to 25. Then cash flow to consistently improve which will help in reducing debt on books ahead. While improving in the profitability and stable working capital, the cash flow of the company are expected to consistently improve in the coming years. As per Sher Khan report, KPR Mill is likely to achieve a cumulative free cash flow of 1,450 crore over the next two years. And ROC is expected to consistently improve from 24.3% FI23 to 28.4% by FI25. Now, if you look at its share holding pattern, promoters hold nearly 75% stake in the company. In fact, promoters have increased their stake in latest quarter. And just 7.59% is with public and remaining is with DIs and FIs, which is great. And DIs have also increased their stake in March quarter. Although FI stake is slightly down, but net net public holding has reduced. Currently, KPR Mill is trading at levels of around 635. It has got a P ratio of 26.6 and it commands a market cap of around 21,700 crore. So it's a mid cap company. And Sher Khan has put a target of 800 rupee on this. That signifies around 25% growth potential. Then third company in the list is SP Apparel. SP Apparel Limited was established in 1989 and is a leading manufacturer and exporter of knitted garment for infants and children in India. Company also manufactures and retails menswear garment in India under the brand Crocodile. Majority of company's revenue is generated from export with UK and Europe contributing around 85% and US contributing around 5% of revenue. Management has guided that in its garment business, the growth is expected at 17% CGR over FR23-25 and EBITDA margin is expected to improve from 13% in FR23 to 18% by FR25. In terms of capex, company is planning to open one new big factory every year with capex of around 50-60 crore. So basically improving growth prospects in the garment business and strengthening of balance sheet with reduction in debt will be the key re-rating triggers for the stock. Currently SP Apparel commands a market cap of just 1000 crore rupee. So it's a micro cap company and its P ratio is just 12.9. Again looking very attractive at current levels. Sher Khan has given a target with an upside potential of around 23% on this stock. Now if you look at its shareholding pattern, promoters have consistently increased their stake in the company from 60.12% in March 17 to 60.5, 61.63, 61.69 and latest at 61.93. Although FIS holding has reduced over the period of time, but it is totally absorbed by DIS that have increased their stake in the company from 6.38% to 12, 13, 15 and latest at 17.7%. And weak hands of public have consistently sold their stake from 23.5% to currently at 19.25%. Then fourth stock in the list is Himmat Singh Ka CDA or HSL. Founded in 1985, 
HSL is a vertically integrated home textile player. Company manufactures, retails and distributes your bedding, baths, drapery, upholstery and lifestyle accessories. Company has manufacturing facility in India and has retail and distribution business in your North America, Europe and Asia. Based on acquisition made by company over the years, it presently holds licenses for leading brands such as your Calvin Klein Home, then your Tommy Hilfiger Home, then your Barbara Barry and then your Royal Velvet. With over 15 plus home textile labels, both owned and licensed, company has one of the largest portfolio of home textile brand with an annual turnover of around 2,500 crore. In the last five years, company has spent around 1,300 to 1,500 crores to expand its bedsheet capacity. Although the company was a net loss in FR23 due to inventory correction with global retailer, then slow demand and high input cost, that has put a toll on its operating performance. One of the culprit here is high debt to equity ratio of 1.9. Currently, HSL has a market cap of around 1100 crore and a price to sale of 0.42. Although in this company, both DIs and FIs have reduced their stake in the past and public holding has increased. Share Khan expect an upside potential around 24% on HSL. So Share Khan is positive on four companies in textile sector, including your Gokaldas Export, KPR Mill, SP April, and then your Himat Singha Day. It's neutral on two companies, Irwin and Wellspun India. Now there are a lot of other companies in textile segment, including your Trident, Page Industries, Lux, Rupa, Dollar and so on. But Sher Khan has not provided recommendation on these stocks. This particular report mainly focused on export market of US and Europe. But one thing is very clear. If cotton prices have fallen 50%, it should benefit all the companies in textile space. And I also think that majority of textile companies that have badly tanked in last one to two years should see a good recovery in the future. Now tell me in the comments, which stock from textile sector you are betting on? I hope you'll find this video useful. I'll see you next video. Till then, take care.